The coyote spotted in Central Park over the weekend is likely the same one that's been hanging out there for years. Experts say these wily predators feel comfortable making the Big Apple their home. Our researchers from the Gotham Coyote Project have been studying the urbanization of coyotes for years and say the city has a lot to offer. Joining us now is co-founder Chris Nagy. Can we just start big picture? What do we take from the idea of seeing coyotes in Central Park, which is, I think, a surprising sight for most <laughs> yeah, of us. Yeah, even for me, it yeah. was a little surprising. But coyotes in general have expanded all over the continent and are in nearly every city. Um, Why? Is that because housing is being built everywhere? What's pushing them into more urban yeah, places? They're, they're, it's interesting why they expanded. Uh, they generally was a, were a Western species, so they are in L.A., they're in New Orleans, mm -hmm. they're in Colorado. Uh, the eastward expansion was more recent. But, you know, they're just very clever, very generalist. They can eat all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. So some, like, things like raccoons uh, or even white-tailed deer, you know, they, they've oh, just taken advantage wow. of what we've changed the environment yeah. into. But they've been here for, I mean, coyotes have been in the city for yeah, decades and decades and decades, right? Yeah, we've been following them since about 2010. Um, and sightings started to increase in kind of the 2000s. All right, you know, it's not just um, Central Park either, right? You're, it's, you're seeing them more throughout other parts of the city as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, the Bronx was, you know, they can walk from upstate, so that was sort of the first place, and all the larger parks in the Bronx were quickly kind of colonized yeah. by coyotes, and we have dens there. Um, they've now made it over, in, over the water into Queens. We have a few pairs in Queens and Nassau, um, and so we're just kind of... It's a really great opportunity scientifically to be able to watch this uh, range expansion happen as mm -hmm. it's happening. So, so what's the interaction like between humans and coyotes? I mean, this video that we keep showing, this guy looks like he's just out for a mid-morning stroll, having the greatest life ever, not bothering anybody. Yeah, uh, generally their number one rule is to avoid people. That's how well, that's a coyote survives in, the, in an urban environment. Central Park is super difficult to do that, um, and so I imagine every now and then uh, the coyote is resting under a bush and someone gets just a little too close, it runs, and now it's sort of uh, a little bit disoriented sure. and looking it, for a place you to know, go what about hide the, again. The, you know, dogs, obviously, that's where we all take our dogs yeah, to walk. Yeah, and sure. you know, I know when I go to visit my mom in Cape Cod, after dusk, we make sure the dogs are on a leash because there's a bunch of coyotes there, which we're afraid of as dog owners. Should we be concerned, or are they so outnumbered at this point in the park that the coyote is not going to be looking to engage with your animal? How does that work? Um, you want to keep your dogs unleashed. That's number one. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be much less likely to approach a dog if it's next to its human. Yeah. Um, but coyotes may see dogs as sort of intruders in their territory, especially the larger dogs. And so you don't want that interaction to happen. Um, coyotes quickly learn where people and dogs tend to go. So if you stay you know, again, leashed and, and stay where you're supposed to be, they will avoid us as much as possible. Oh, we like the sound of that. Yeah. All right, Chris, we're going to have to leave it there. It's fascinating stuff, though. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you.